Welcome to this edition of Week in Review. My name is Marlon Paley, and Ganim is out in assignment, but uh, in his uh, place, I have uh, got better than the president of LLBN. I've got the world famous chairman of the board of the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. His name is Lawrence Garrity, Dr. Garrity. And of course, uh, you're certainly welcome uh, on this set anytime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Now, we are going to be telling you what is going on and what has been going on the past week here at uh, the studios of LLBN. And this is really exciting. Uh, Dr. Garrity uh, is, uh, has a new program. He also has a new co-host, co and let's introduce him now. Uh, Doug Clark, mm -hmm. uh, you are a, a doctor. Welcome. I am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And much. a doctor of what? Uh, I, I, my, my primary studies are in Hebrew Bible or Old Testament, mm -hmm. but m most of my work has been in archaeology. And you're uh, a member of the, uh, the team there at La Sierra? The, correct. I direct the uh, Center for Near Eastern Archaeology, and I'm associate dean of the Divinity School. So, boy, that, what a perfect fit. I mean, <laughs> Divinity School and archaeology, has that been a benefit to you? It really is. In fact, uh, neither Larry nor I think about archaeology without thinking about biblical connections. And so it's been a nice fit for years and still is, and we hope it will continue to be. Okay, you've been doing this uh, pr pretty much all of your life. Uh, do, are you still surprised by what you find out in the field? Always. Uh, we never know. You, I mean, you can guess at what might be under the surface, but you never know for sure. And that's, that's exciting. I mean, that makes it mm -hmm. uh, worth getting up in the morning. And mm -hmm. uh, some of these discoveries are so intriguing and uh, illuminate the Bible so well that we just keep going. I mean, you just can't stop, so mm -hmm. you keep going. Uh, Dr. Garrity, has that been your experience? I mean, uh, I, I say uh, world famous because you are really world f famous in the, in the uh, field of archaeology. Well, you know, you're very generous to say that. <laughs> Both Doug and I have worked for over 40 years together mm -hmm. in Jordan. We started in 1973 together, and I, I started there in uh, 1968. Right. So we have uh, been a long time in the field and have a productive team. We've Does got that a lot make of good colleagues. Does that make Doug more famous than you? <laughs> I, I, I would say that we're equally famous because we depend on each other for just about everything that we do. <laughs> this is a team, and, and, it's, and it's been expressed recently to me by a colleague uh, from Jordan, uh, from the government of Jordan, who said that when archaeologists come to Jordan, we tell them they need to do it the Madaba Plains Project way. They need to follow That's those right. standards. And so... Okay. Yeah, well, what I'd is that way? I mean, what, 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 what did you say? Yeah, the, the Madaba Plains Project. That's the Plains. name of our project right, in Jordan. Right, yeah. and the town of Madaba in central Jordan is kind of the center of, an, of a large agricultural zone. Mm -hmm. And the Madaba Plains Project um, actually goes back to Heshbon days, mm -hmm. but we kind of did that, that was, we kind of collected that uh, after the fact, but, um, but it's a large project, three major uh, excavation sites, and the, the standards for excavating and publishing and doing the scientific and the technological work, uh, people do look to us and a number of people use our recording system. So this uh, form format or formula that you came up with is, is what the government requires at all archaeologists. You know, are they certainly recommend it. There are different ways to do it, but in Jordan at least, there are probably 12 to 15 excavations that use uh, our recording system. And it, and it helps the government because a lot of government workers have worked with us. They've learned the system, and they're happy to see other people do it too. So it's, it's been a good synergy for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Dr. Garrity, what, uh, what is your favorite part of the Middle East? Is it uh, Egypt? Is it Syria? Is it... Well, you know, the whole Middle East is important for the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so in those days, days of the Bible, there weren't the same kind of borders and divisions that we have today. So the modern divisions that we have sort of are arbitrary in terms of what the biblical stage was like. But I, I think because we work so hard in Jordan and doing our excavations and so on that we have to say that uh, Jordan is our favorite spot. Yeah. Um, when Dr. Horn chose the site of Heshbon to begin his excavation in 1968, there were no Jordanians with PhDs in archaeology, for instance, and the students who were studying in the master's program at the University of Jordan were assigned to our uh, project to learn field work. 
And so we've developed all these friends with people who are now teachers, professors, museum curators, directors in the Department of Antiquities, and so on. And we've all sort of grown up together in the field. And so it's been a very fruitful relationship. Mm -hmm. You have been acquainted uh, with danger all of your life. The Mideast <laughs> is a dangerous place. That's true. Do you guys uh, have some fear or trepidation about spending so much time in, in these uh, war-torn areas? It, it's fun to think about the sympathy stories for archaeologists going into <laughs> danger zones and maybe upping the hazard pay or something yes, like uh, that. Is um, lost your, um, uh, well, you know, we've, we can tell you, this is the former president. <laughs> uh, but, but actually, Jordan is probably the safest country, I'd say, in the right. whole region. Right. Um, right. And it is um, supported in, by, by lots of external funds. It's not a wealthy country. It doesn't have oil. They're still looking. but uh, yeah. So they have support. But they have made the most of it. And they've made it a safe place. It's a hospitable place. It's extremely welcoming. So uh, mm -hmm. it is without question the place that we kind of mm -hmm. first think of as a Middle Eastern place that we'd like to be. Mm -hmm. And we go there so often, have so many friends. We see <coughs> Arabs perhaps in a different way than many people in the United States do. We know them to be a hospitable, friendly, kind people, and that's been our experience of them. Sure, they're the other kinds too. Every country has them. But uh, I, I can say that I've been shot at. I have been um, captured as a hostage in a Palestinian camp. Uh, I grew up, you know, uh, in the Middle East. My teenage years were spent there, so I've been evacuated many times uh, because of uh, war zones and so forth. But as Doug says, our experience in Jordan has been consistently one of hospitality, kindness, friendliness, and uh, that's our experience. Well, those kind of, uh, sound like the same kind of stories. I mean, Ganem and you <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> have, have uh, pretty much the same experience. Right. But, well, part of the problem that we have whenever we're in Jordan, and I was there last week, uh, when, we want, when we're ready to leave, everybody wants to give us dinner. Everybody wants to take <laughs> us out to dinner. It's what we call the hospitality vortex. Uh, and you're kind of sucked in. It's like a magnet. It's like a black mm. hole yeah. that pulls you into this hospitality vortex. And that characterizes Doug, uh, life uh, in Jordan. brag a little bit about the meeting that you put together last week in, in Amman, the kinds of people that were there. We, we have an issue that a lot of excavations have, and that is that we're working on private land. And so the, the two landowners, the two major landowners, good friends, um, but they are not realizing the value of their land. But at the same time, they can't build on that land because the government won't let them. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to pull together the, the decision makers. And so last week on uh, Tuesday evening, we had uh, uh, people from the royal family. We had people from the government, from the parliament. We had the mayor of the Greater Amman Municipality, people from the Department of Antiquities, the Ministry of Tourism, archaeologists, um, people working in, uh, in different uh, universities. Had them all together, about 100 people in one room, spent an hour, uh, and we worked through um, what could we do next to save the cultural heritage of Jordan and also serve the landowners mm -hmm. well and ethically and correctly and legally. Um, and it turned out, actually, I, don't know, I didn't know how to expect it. Would well, turn it sounds out, like it, turned, it out out turned out pretty well it because did, they've yeah. adopted your standard right. uh, of uh, right. protecting the antiquities. Right. And I'm, I am sure that's a effect of every dig across the, the entire region. We even had um, both of the landowners donated a substantial amount of, uh, of money for this, uh, we hope, a collaborative effort to make this available. We want to build a, an archaeological park so that it's not just the, the specialists who go in and, and do their thing. We want to make it available for Jordanians and for visitors and to construct a park. And we can't do that under current circumstances. So it was really, it was quite exciting. <laughs> well, uh, you may have asked yourself the question of, uh, well, what are these guys, what's this have to do with the Week in Review <laughs> of LLBN? Well, I'll tell you, because these are the two hosts, mm -hmm. and uh, by now you can tell that they're eminently qualified to uh, bring a new program to the Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. What's the title, Dr. Garrity? Excavating the Bible, 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what archaeology can teach us. That's sub, right. um, archaeologists, that. like all scholars, like to have a colon <laughs> and a subtitle, mm -hmm. and so right. excavating the Bible, what archaeology can So what us. can we expect from this new uh, uh, series here at LLBN? Well, we'll talk a little bit about our own work and how it's going and what we've discovered and how it relates to the Bible. We're going to call in other members of our team to talk to them about their discoveries. We have uh, another professor uh, from Los Area University, Dr. Chang Ho Ji, who has his own site that, that's going to be uh, an early uh, discussion that we will have. And then visiting guests that are in Southern California who uh, know about archaeology and the Bible and have been involved in discoveries themselves, we'll, we'll include them. So we'll gradually talk about inscriptions and about discoveries and about sites and about maybe difficult uh, texts in the Bible to understand and how archaeology helps us to understand that better. And if anybody of in, who's listening has a particular topic that they would like us to discuss, let them uh, call LBN, oh, yes. LBN and we'll, we'll be glad right. to try to squeeze yes, that in. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, call us, uh, actually call Hannah uh, at our, the number at the <laughs> bottom of the screen and uh, set that up because we really want to hear uh, what, what your input is mm -hmm. uh, about uh, Dr. Gary's suge suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a half hour program. How many uh, in the series? Well, we are thinking of a half hour program every week and we at least have we have close to a year mapped mm -hmm. out, and so... And this, these are the kind of things that you guys... Yeah, yeah, these, are, these, are, the, these right. are the real things. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, this is going to be in one of your episodes. Uh, right, correct. Episode right. three or four. Uh, uh, yes, correct. Uh, well, real quickly, give us a, a, a behind-the-scenes look. <laughs> what are these things? <laughs> these are from south-central Jordan at a site called Ataruz or Atarot in the Bible, and we will be talking about that tremendous site. Um, How Dr. old is Chung the These go back to the 8th century. Um, I'm not sure about the date of all of them, but most of them are from... It's a, a, the occupation there is fairly tight, and uh, much of these are from the 8th century B.C. So we're talking about the time of the prophets. Mm -hmm. uh, Chung Ho Ji will be able to point at it and say, nah, it's yeah. a little closer to the end of the 8th century, this is 7th, whatever. Uh, but in any case, we're talking about the time of the prophets. Well, I can hardly wait for this episode to <laughs> come out because I want to know what I have been so close to. <laughs> I mean, this is all obviously some kind of a corn crusher. It or is a, a, a grinding. Yeah, uh, uh, a grinding thing. Here. So how, how old is this stone? Well, the basalt itself is when the volcano went off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, a, ge that's a geological <laughs> question. <laughs> it, it, it was, it was uh, shaped and, and put into use, uh, again, probably in the 8th century, although many of these are reused. Mm -hmm. um, these are hard to come by, and so you get a big piece, and over time it breaks, and so somebody says, you know, I could use this part, and I'll just, mm -hmm. you know, round the edges and so on, use it for a grinding stone. So we may even have a reused one here. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you ever discovered something that disproves something in the Bible yet? I wouldn't say disproves, but sometimes it can create uh, problems because we, uh, our, our previous understanding uh, mm -hmm. obviously doesn't fit. So we find a, discov a discovery that helps to shape a new understanding. And by putting together what the Bible uh, tells us and how we can understand it, along with what's discovered in archaeology, we can usually find an explanation that fits. So all everything that you do actually supports that's right. what the scripture says. That's right. Says. That's right. It, it supports a clear, better understanding. Yeah. I'll give you the last word. What would you like to say to our audience about this new program and, and uh, what they should look for? Just uh, look yeah. at the Well, I, I hope that uh, you will find that this program helps you uh, understand the Bible better and how archaeology can illuminate uh, the Bible. Uh, and by all means, if you have questions, uh, contact us through LLBN and suggest what you'd like us to talk about. We'll, we'll be glad to do that. Don't miss this brand new series, Ex Excavating the Bible with Dr. Larry Garrity and Dr. Doug Clark, right here on LLBN. And you've already got the times. Uh, write them down and don't miss it. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Week in Review.